right. So we are going to chat about the three main flooring types that pretty much everyone wants to know about is either thinking about, considering, and or going to replace form that they do have, and that would be laminate, vinyl, and hardwood. So what can you tell us about those three types, why we would pick one over the other, and really what their key differences are? So, I mean, first and foremost, you should definitely buy all three, and Okanagan Hardwood is a great place to buy those from. Um, that, that There's a little sales pitch for you. Um, <laughs> I, I think the big thing for, for flooring, um, and I, I mean a lot of building products, is kind of like find your fit, qualify your space. So um, if you are a, a young family and you've got a dog and kids and you have a really active lifestyle and you know that um, you know your floor is going to get used and abused, maybe you kind of figure out that you know, maybe hardwood isn't necessarily the option as, as great as hardwood is and as durable finishes and, and some of the hardnesses of, of hardwood goes, maybe like uh, an artificial product like a laminate or a vinyl plank may be a little bit more suited for your lifestyle. Um, tile as well would be an option. Mm -hmm. Some people just prefer to have everything tiled. They've got places in their, the snowbirds have places in Arizona and, and what have you, and or California, and their entire floor is tiled there, and they like that because there's just zero, zero worry. It just, you know, you spill something, you can mop it up, no big deal. Um, yeah, definitely. I would say, though, uh, as far as, like, a laminate, for the most part, and it has changed recently, laminates are definitely more in all of your living areas, all of your, your main use bedrooms, hallways, living rooms, kitchens, um, dining rooms, those sorts of things, stairs even, um, but not necessarily in wet areas like your mud rooms or uh, full bathrooms. You can do half baths like powder rooms, a lot of people will ask which is kind of funny because if you're willing to put it in like a kitchen or, or a powder room, they're almost the same thing as far as mm -hmm. area. What sounds, yeah. They do have waterproof uh, laminates that have come out. Um, they're actually pretty impressive. But again, just like anything else that's a new technology, you, you might want to hold up. Some people are holding off or a little gun shy, and that's fine. I mean, just, I mean, we, we weren't quite sure that an iPhone was going to be um, the big thing or look at Blackberry or whatever and now you know we've all got these devices and we're you know I got an Apple watch who knew that was gonna be a thing you can pay with a watch who knew right I mean Dick Tracy knew but um, <laughs> this is true but um, so to break it down for like in simple terms though because we're all using industry terminology what is the main difference between a laminate to a vinyl from like a product base great question okay so I can ramble and I'm sorry so <laughs> lam laminates and vinyls Overall, they're going to do the same thing as if we're going to compare them. Laminates do have a harder, um, like a film on top. So it's more of like a harder, more of a, a, a um, just a harder impact kind of thing. So they're both usually like a light commercial rated as, as we would tell you. Um, what that is you can put them definitely in a residential, like your home, um, as well as a business. Um, vinyl, on the other side, you can put uh, basically anywhere in a home. So wet areas um that being said vinyls in nature are a little bit softer um as okay. that goes so um sometimes I, I usually will tell people like just pick the color that makes the most sense for you because as far as a use for those main areas they're going to do the same thing if you're installing it over a concrete or or plywood depending on the type of home construction maybe it's a townhouse or it could be a condo um, both of these products could could feel different and maybe sound different when you walk on them. People have talked about like a like a clicky sound when you walk oh. on laminate, and I both owned those and had that sound as well as having not. So depending on on the application that's going down. So um, at the end of the day, for those laminates and vinyls, they're going to do a lot of the same things. I think uh, depending on how they're made too. There's going to be some, just like everything else, there's going to be some cheaper ones that uh, maybe say they do a bunch of things, but maybe they don't click together really nicely and you might have really, you know, some problems installing them. I've been there. Um, you can also get products that, you know, have cork backings like these vinyls now that kind of like an all-in-one, they have like a, or a cork backing. I brought one along here, it kind of has like a cool saw cut logo. Um, and they've got like a cork backing on them. Um, like this one has like a micro bend, um, 
backing on it or uh, uh, application as well to reduce mold and mildew. Um, there's a lot of bells and whistles on these things, and we're, we're not going to tell you, oh, it does this and this. When you break it down, Cole's notes, they're both going to be great for um, an active family that uh, has a lot going on. You know, maybe you've got kids with, you know, their, their Barbies and their, their doll shoes or Tonka trucks or uh, walking through, you just came home from baseball practice or what have you, and the kids at their We're going to yeah. They're going to handle a lot of that. They're not bulletproof. So anybody that says, like, it's going to be the be-all, end-all, you still have to be realistic that, you know, you can damage these floors and the right impact when something's dropped on it or hit on an angle. You can damage these floors, but general walking traffic and day-to-day -day mm -hmm. these products are going to hold up really, really well. Well, I mean, that's the same that can happen for any type of flooring tile as well. If you drop a really heavy object on a giant tile and you hit it at the right point, it will crack. Absolutely. So I think that really needs to be an expectation and understanding of people across the board that flooring is not a catch-all statement. No. Everyone has their pros and cons in terms of what they might be able to withstand differently than another type of product, but it all depends upon how you're going to use it. Mm -hmm. If you treat and you maintain your flooring poorly, it's not going to, to live up to what it is that you're hoping that it will do. Absolutely. And I mean, I guess the big one too, that probably just doesn't get talked about is flooring maintenance, like clean your floors, brush them up. If you leave like dust and debris on there, car mm -hmm. great example. And we could do that another day, but if you're leaving, That's a whole other topic. <laughs> If you're leaving all the debris on there and you're walking, even with stocking feet, like, um, or bare feet, even like your feet have oils on them and you're leaving all these, if you're not properly cleaning your floors and doing the proper upkeep vacuuming, like on a hard surface, don't use like a beater bar, obviously, um, which for the people that don't know what that is, is basically when you do your carpet and it's rumbling everything up and getting all the extra dirt, there are like Dyson's and sharks. Those are all the big ones. Now, um, they have like a, more of like a foam, not quite a foam, but like a, a felt uh, roller that you can have on there that's made for a hard surface so you can collect all that. Those are great, but ma continual maintenance um, is, is a big one because, the yeah. get, you know, when we talk about warranties and longevity, those are great if you're actually following what you're supposed to do. If you just leave everything there, don't expect it to be bulletproof for, you know, the entirety of the floor. Like stuff's going to wear down. Yeah, definitely. So, okay, on the note of maintenance, because this is huge in Instagram, and I kind of cringe every time I see it. No. What is with people <laughs> washing their floors with Tide? With Tide? Yeah, it's, it's a thing across Instagram where it's like, wash your laminate and your vinyl floors with Tide or hardwood, and I'm like, it, it voids your warranty. <laughs> I, it's a thing. <laughs> photo, this is the moment right now. People are doing this, really. Like Tide pods or... No, like they take Tide dish soap and it's supposed to be a catch all in terms of it cleans your floor so great. And I'm like, well, have you wondered why it's cleaning your floor so wonderfully? Mm -hmm. And it, it, it has basically substrates within it that breaks down all of your epoxy layers and your glues and things that keep all of your vinyl and your, your laminates together and it damages your floor and then your warranties void. But these are things that people don't talk about is that because they see it on Instagram and they see it in Facebook groups like, oh, I'll clean my floors with Tide. And you're like, don't actually do that. Don't do that. Maybe don't. <laughs> so, Are there specific products we should be using to clean our floors instead of Tide? I thought you were going in a different direction. <laughs> was, that was a moment for sure. Um, no, don't do that. Also, don't eat like Tide Pods. Remember, people, don't do that. Let's, let's no. be responsible. <laughs> um, maintenance on floor, like, so, and I mean, this is, they're not paying for anything, but we use... Uh, but we, we sand and finish floors at, at our location here. So we use a product and there's, there's lots of um, cleaners that are out there. We sell a product um, called um, by Bona. Um, they do hardwood finishes, um, stains, what have you. Um, so we sell their cleaner. You can also get it at Home Depot. I'm not saying please come buy it from us. I mean, uh -huh. can. Um, but what we really like about their product for hard services anyway, is that it doesn't leave a streak. It's safe for kids. And it is like a, uh, like a water or a soap based kind of thing. So there's no like harsh chemicals in there. So if you've got a two year old or a one year old that licks the floor still, or your dog or whatever, you don't have to worry about like, it's still like soaps and 
don't drink it, but um, it, it, that would be safe. But any of those, like there's the, um, like the green cleaner, whatever they call the simply greens and all those. Oh yeah. The one from the grocery store. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're cleaners are cleaners, but don't over clean your floor. Um, what we found is that a lot of people are, you know, they get a buildup of all their cleaners and, and this and that, and it just takes yeah. off. Yeah. And then we get called, which is great because we offer the service, but we get called in to do like a power scrub and really just take all that film and everything that's the buildup um, off of your hardwood floor or tile, um, a hard service. Um, and you can, you can pull that and kind of start fresh and just get back down to the finish itself. Um, mm -hmm. Don't use a steam cleaner unless it's like a sheet vinyl or tile. Um, I don't care what, I, honestly, I don't care what they tell you. I don't care if you're, especially if you're at like these um, home shows. The, yeah, where they're like, hey, the steam mop or kill mark on every floor impossible. And you're like, mm. yeah. So, and I know they're, oh, it, we guarantee it, you know, it works. I mean, or it's safe for hardwood. Okay, let's just break down the reality of what a steam cleaner is or steam mop. It's steam, it's hot water, and you're forcing it into your floor. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to break down the blue substrate. Let's be, yeah. let's be smart adults, right? It's going to eventually break down. And that hardwood, when we'll use hardwood in this example, definitely don't be using it for like laminates and stuff. You're compressed mm -hmm. or So you're forcing that hot, hot, hot steam water into the hardwood. And you're now adding moisture that it, it's not asking for, essentially. And it has to go back somewhere. So hardwood and yeah. contracts eventually and oh i've been using it for 20 years and it's yeah you might have lucked out you may know things that are not know things going underneath your floor maybe your subfloor is an absolute mess now maybe <laughs> it's growing that you have no clue about but don't use them on there it's it's not it's not a good thing to do it's not wise um they are great products and by all means they are good for some things but i mean our big thing here is we try to educate and inform our, our customers because at the end of the day, like we don't want to find out the hard way that, you know, a floors that we sold them got damaged or that we're finding out that they have to replace their floors because of these things. Like we can tell you this for free and anybody that is willing to listen. And we get it a lot. Of, we used to do the home shows a ton and people would come because the guy would be down the hall and they, yeah. they, we just want to, and that's what I thought you were going to ask. We just want to ask, we just say no. They're like, that's what I thought. We, they didn't even ask the question. We already knew the question. So. Because uh, you're an expert. <laughs> so in the realm of vinyls, you have yeah. two products. You have your glue down options. Yes. And then you have your click and play ones, which yeah. basically act as tongue and grooves. Right. What are the better applications for both? And obviously laminate and engineered hardwood also come in a tongue and groove. So what are your better applications and why would you use one over the other? Okay. So the click one, and I've got one here, I'll just show you, um, try to get the best kind of view of that. So as you guys can see, like this is a full sample. So these are cut pieces and they're clicked together. Uh -huh. Click ones can basically go anywhere. So it has this pad built in. Everything clicks over, goes over your plywood or your concrete, and you're basically good to go. Um, for the ones that are glue downers, you've probably seen they're, like the one you've got there. I think it's called like a drop and go or drop and done. So they're yeah. like a five millimeter thick product that they're quite heavy. You lift one plank and you feel like you've done a workout. Um, but they're meant to just basically sit in place and they're not going to shift if installed properly. Um, but mm -hmm. You still have to glue, it's called like a perimeter glue. So you would glue all the boards or the planks around the room and okay. loose lay the rest. Now we still glue them all down just because it's it's still kind of new technology, even five or six years in. But anytime you're using those, it would be for sure over concrete because that's an easy application to go over. If you are going in a main area like over plywood in a main mm -hmm like your main residence, an actual house, you would need uh, a good one-sided plywood. Now, again, before I got into the flooring industry, I still wouldn't know what that meant. Basically, you're going to get a, a sheet of plywood that goes down over your um, existing, like, tongue and groove floor over your joists, and you put that down. Now, on the top of that sheet, it is going to be 
super, super smooth. You can't have any dimples or what have you, because what happens is as thick as these products are, and they are quite thick, but when you put them down, what happens is if we put down a normal sheet of plywood that you can get at Home Depot, you'll see all the strands, like a strand board in there. When yeah. the vinyl goes down, what happens is over time, as you walk over it, you're pressing the plywood into that vinyl. And eventually, and I have seen this, so I can vouch you're for You're going to get like a relief. You're going to start seeing that relief go into the vinyl. And as thick as there, it does happen. Uh, some, I've seen some cheaper products that they happen sooner, but mm -hmm. it does happen. So most of the time we do see them in, in basements, um, of, you know, or rental suites or what have you, just because it is an easier application and you don't have to really prep aside from having a level subfloor. Um, if it is in a residence, then usually we are having to sheet because sometimes it is a bathroom or a bigger bathroom or something, um, that they have to sheet. We do see that still. I don't deal with that as much, but that would be the proper application to put it down. So I've never heard of that actually, where you put a bead of, of glue around the perimeter. So if it was like a bathroom or something, you would glue the product down, but you would also glue around the edge and then install all of your baseboards. So, yeah, so kind of, sort of. So for that glue down product, that drop, and this is more of the drop and done one, because there are mm -hmm. great glue down ones if they're thinner that you would have to fully glue the floor, but for these thicker ones, which I think you probably got in your hand there. I think I had it, yeah. Yeah, so those ones you would glue, like I'm in a, let's call it 10 by 10 room. So every board we put in, we glue all the boards around the perimeter walls. And then, I mean, you can put your baseboards on, but probably do that after. And then all the other planks that you're staggering in would then be for that type of floor would be you could loose lay them and just drop them in place maybe give them a little you know a mallet and, and put them into place um mm -hmm. to do it that way we still glue them down so when even for that product again just we, we know for sure that that product is in place and it's not going anywhere the benefit of that type of product is if you happen to gouge one really bad again let's say a rental suite or um a commercial application maybe it's like a motor something you can take it out a whole lot easier you can suction them up or um you don't have to go that crudely but you could do that um and you can replace that that plank and you're good to go it's so it's a little little easier for maintenance okay so vinyl and laminate kind of the same they both have basically a film and a harder surface that are good for impact. They're good for water resistance, vinyl more so. And they are pretty much a catch-all in terms of anywhere to be installed in your home. Vinyl can go in all wet zones. That's, that. That's wonderful. So in terms of hardwood, what is the difference between a hardwood hardwood mm -hmm. versus an engineered hardwood? Okay. So this is one that... Uh, we see a lot of and people will walk into our store and I need engineered hardwood. Okay. Do you know why you need engineered hardwood? Oh, because I have to have engineered. It's not like this magical product that does something completely different than a, a solid surface would. So hardwood does come um, in a solid form. If you've ever, you know, seen a, a, a floor that has been, most people would recognize like a sanded and finished floor on site. Um, Grandma's like 1960s, 1970s kind of house. Yeah. So everyone kind of associates with that. Most of those floors would be solid. So usually they're three quarters of an inch thick. Okay. Um, and on a three quarter inch thick floor, and I'm going to show you an engineered floor just to give you an idea here. So mm -hmm. I can do this and use my shoulder to help me out. So you can see that there's a, a wear layer on top of this, like this middle core here. So yes. That wear layer on a, if we're gonna say it was a solid product, that would be the, the wear, the area that we could sand down and that we would be able to sand and refinish. Um, that's also um, on, a, on a solid product, it's, it's all one board. So um, wood, actually all floors, expand and contract so even on tile there's grout joints and what have you laminates are all clicked together they all move as one very very slightly but they move vinyl same thing so with hardwood um your your hardwood on a solid and engineered but i'll talk about solid first 
they expand and they contract as they're bringing in moisture and releasing moisture throughout the year. Um, humidity levels will decide, you know, how dry or how, how moist the air is in, in your home. And I mean, you could probably tell in your hands in, in January of how dry things are, your floor will be probably sound a little bit more like crackly if it's, if it's hard <laughs> or, um, there's nothing wrong with your floor. It's just asking for a little bit of moisture and maybe it's not getting quite the amount it needs. Um, a solid floor can only be installed um, on or above grade. Uh, you can't mm -hmm. install it over um, concrete. Or concrete. You shouldn't. So it's not floor, yeah. Yeah, because people have done it and whatever. You do, you do what you want to do, but we're not going to endorse that. Um, so a solid can be nailed down uh, over both of those app or, or staple, depending on the thickness, I suppose. Um, whereas an engineered product can go on any level of a home. It can go over concrete. It can be okay. nailed. It can be floated. So maybe you need it to be in a condo and it has to be over a pad. You can allow it to f be a floating floor. Um, you'll have transition moldings in your doorways, um, or it can be glued down over concrete or, or plywood. Sometimes that, that is needed. So um, an engineered floor can be put basically anywhere. The benefit of engineered floors is because you're getting uh, that thinner wear layer on top, as opposed to the entire product made out of wood, that layer allows you to potentially go a lot wider um, and allow yourself to maybe get different options for wood. So you can get longer boards, wider boards, more options like that. So that's where we're seeing all these wide planks now. Um, you can also get them in narrow boards. The board itself potentially also can be a lot more stable depending on who's manufacturing it. Um, the way the construction is like this one here, um, as you can see, actually that's the wrong side. Let's show that. So this one here has uh, like a four millimeter wear layer and then there is, a, it's called a finger, um, a finger joint core. And as you can see, they're kind of like layered. Mm -hmm. like so like a waffle kind of look. Basically it just creates a more stable board those boards usually can handle, or that floor can handle a wider range of relative humidity. So again, it can be in drier areas as well as areas that are quite, you know, quite humid. So, I mean, in the Okanagan here, Vancouver, um, even out in the Soyuz or, or what have you, it has a wider range. So that product will be, it will stay stable um, in those environments. So, so oh, more of, where the product is installed um, and then what kind of options you can get for it. So on the top, if you were to look at this floor and I didn't tell you it was solid or engineered, they're both going to look the same on the top. Yeah. It's the construction underneath, whether it's actually solid or engineered. So um, they both are hardwood. One just has maybe a thicker layer on top and one is the entire product made of that wood. So. So then as both being hardwoods, the type of species of the wood needs to be considered in terms of its relative softness or hardness sure. or impact relation, mm -hmm. as well as they both could be refinished. So engineered hardwood, definitely less so because obviously the core is like a four, the top piece is about a four mil versus a three quarter inch of a solid piece of wood, right. but they both can be refinished and then sanded down and resealed. Um, it's just really at that point location as well as preference. And I'm assuming full on hardwood is significantly more expensive than engineered. Um, Maybe not, not significantly, but more expensive. Not necessarily. So uh, if we were to compare one over the other, usually the solid woods uh, tend to be a little bit cheaper, believe it or not. Okay. Um, and which seems weird because you're not getting as much hardwood. The thing is, when you produce an engineered product, there's more processes that go into it. So if we're going to take a piece of wood and we basically mill it down and throw a stain on it and a finish, tongue and groove, whatever, put it in a box, that's it. That's the process. When you're engineering it, you've got to have the top layer specially cut. There's a special machine that would do that. Your finger joints in this case, some will have like a plywood core. Um, again, those need to be properly built. Different suppliers offer those. So you're, you're getting different things happening with those. So usually the engineered product um, would be more. Um, and to get to the sand and finish side of things too, um, like this product is a hand scrape product. 
We Mm -hmm. normally sand and finish um, something like that because what happens is we have to sand past. You'll see the bevels on these boards, so the separation parts of it. What happens is we have to sand past those to get to a smooth uh, level. Otherwise, you can see the finish and the stain dip into those, and it looks awful. Um, unless that's what you're going for, I suppose. Um, so we have to actually sand past, which usually means we're going to be taking more of that top layer off to achieve what you're asking us to do. And at that point, the floor would essentially would be a throwaway because we're now getting close enough to the tongue and groove where the board's now unstable. And, I mean, you'd be better off with the plywood floor at that point. Okay. So well, those, I didn't know that. That is good to know. Those things would have to be taken into account for sure. So if you could give like three takeaways in terms of why someone would choose the pros and cons in terms of why someone would choose a hardwood or an engineered wood versus a laminate and a vinyl, then we can really know what specific quality we might be looking for for our own homes. Okay. So, I mean, I work for Okanagan Hardwood. This company was founded on hardwood. It's over 50 years old. Um, started out of a garage and now we're 20 plus employees and blah, 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 blah. Um, hardwood, there are statistics that uh, have been proven for, from realtors and from what have you, that the resale value um, on a home is significantly higher um, having hardwood floors in there. Um, uh, the naturalness of the natural beauty of hardwood, the fact that you're getting warm and just like from the earth, um, there are, countless options it seems with hardwood your wide planks just it just it gives your home a natural feel um it is warm when you're stepping on it at the same time if it's over concrete not always um but uh there's definitely a prestige value to it and i mean i don't know it's wood like it just brings us kind of back and it's something there's a natural quality to it yeah there's something that you can again you can sand and finish these so some of these floors can last like in the heritage homes that we're seeing downtown in Kelowna. some of these floors are pushing like 70 years old Mm -hmm. you know maybe they've been a bit beat up but we can bring them and they can look like 2022 so there's something to be said for that but at the same time um I would say, I mean, hardwood would be what you want, but it may not be the best suited option. If you're going to a laminate or a vinyl plank, they are great options as well. Again, more on uh, maybe uh, for the lifestyle of what that that home is going to see. Um, Maybe it's a home that I'm I'm not, I don't want to say careless, but there's going to be a lot more going on in that, that maybe it's a little bit more carefree. Mm -hmm. And I think with the options on your price point, I, I should probably bring that your price point is definitely less than hardwood um, for most of them, I should say, because sometimes they meet in the middle and you get what you pay for when you're that close. Um, okay. But uh, a laminate or a vinyl plank, the price point is definitely a lot less. And we are seeing new homes that have these products, all three of them, but the laminates and the vinyls um, in brand new homes. And they look amazing the colors because they're digital um you can pinpoint i mean if you design something you can have your own floor and we've seen that there's you know specific unique colors that uh you know could not exist otherwise maybe you want uh i don't know like a a cork type of look on hardwood with like an imprint you can have that made i mean i don't know who does that but you can have it made as you could and technology these days huh exactly so <laughs> more of an active you know more of a i mean kind of like family floors essentially but uh a little bit more carefree that you're able to throw a little bit more at it and not have to worry as much about them and uh they're gonna look pretty much the same as the day you put them in unless you absolutely trash your home so well let's hope no one actually does that although i did have a horrible tenant once and they did so it can actually happen and that's what uh-huh. we're going to open it up for questions. So if you have any, throw them in it to the question box. I have one question from Helm Inc. And then I will. Oh, there was a question or was a comment. I'm trying to. Um, yeah. Is that with solid hardwood? Do you need a different humidity system? No. And there's another thing. No one's telling you this. Unfortunately, hardwood, solid hardwood, engineered hardwood, vinyl plank, laminate, your body. 
um, your baseboards, your, your walls, your doors, casings, they require a humidifier. You should have a humidifier on your furnace. We're not going to tell you to go get one right now before the weekend starts, but look into it. If you don't have one, if you mm-hmm. make sure that it's on and if it's on, make sure it's working. Those are key. And I, I, I'm not joking because we do see that these things happen. Oh, I have a humidifier and blah, blah, blah. And my floor's all crackly. And then you find out that it hasn't been working for eight months. That's a problem. I don't even have a humidifier, so I feel like I need to go get one. It's, it is an important thing because, again, you're bringing – and sometimes it's, it's something that can't be done. There are hacks, and I can get into that as well. Um, it's, it's, I, I want to call it kind of like an insurance policy for your floor, but you're introducing moisture via your furnace – and you don't have to go get the Gucci model. You can get, you know, a cost-efficient one that that works in your budget. Um, mm-hmm. It's nice if you're building because you just build it into your mortgage payment, so that's kind of nice. Um, but it, it is a wise thing to have one on your furnace because it, it keeps your hardwood, or and I'm going to use hardwood as the main one, it keeps it acting the way that it was meant to act. Wood wants to stay in a comfortable state, and as soon as you pull it out of that, things start to happen. You can see an engineered board delaminate so the top layer would basically come off of the wood. You can see solid wood warp and twist and cup or crown as well. There's crazy things that can happen to wood and laminate. My goodness, I've seen some things that sound insane and until you see it, you wouldn't believe it. Um, But having an appropriate amount of moisture is super key. So for both Hardwood and engineered hardwood absolutely should have fun. Okay, perfect. If you've got any questions, drop them in. I'm going to throw into my three main ones, and then we'll do some key takeaways and wrap this up. Um, Out of the brands like Okanagan Hardwood Carries, what are the ones that you trust the most? Okay, so and I, it's tough because you don't want to sales pitch people, but if you're going to give me the the, the table, then I'll do it. Um, so Vintage Hardwood is is kind of one of our main ones. Um, they are a Canadian hardwood manufacturer. Um, their products are, are milled in Quebec and finished in Toronto. Um, the wood obviously doesn't all come from Canada because you can't get some species in Canada. Um, phenomenal product. They're the product that I'm showing you right here. Um, they have a great line of colors. I've got it in my own home. Uh, I've got a solid maple. It's a great wearing floor their finishes are great Um, my kids haven't been able to destroy them yet nor has my golden retriever um so perfect it's it's a it's it's a the floor that keeps on ticking um another one would be and i think i saw the sample you had there would be craft um we used to know the one i put in my lovely home up in um rock creek yeah gorgeous floors um they're known more for their wide long distress boards so you're getting seven or eight inches wide by up to eight um feet long they also have uh, for a good chunk of their floors just a 10 foot um board option so maybe you have a big open uh floor space that you can do that vintage does have wide long boards as well uh, those would be kind of our two main ones, maybe Lausanne as well. They're another Canadian mill. Um, for the laminates and vinyls, I mean, Torley's and Mohawk are both great. Um, we, we sell a lot of their products, Bolu as well. Um, uh-huh. There's There are so many products that are out there. And I think the main thing is these are the brands we trust and we deal direct with all these. So it's great that the one thing that we try to tell people is like, do your homework. If you've got the time to do it, which you should, cause you're walking on your floors every single day. Um, take the time and do the proper homework for what's going to go in your home. Um, it, it will mean a great deal. Come in and ask us questions. I mean, that's the one thing, just like anything else. Like sometimes you think, you know, what's going on and then you find out you don't ask a question. It's free. Give us a call. We, I mean, it may be a 20 minute phone conversation, but if we saved you from doing something catastrophic, I'm glad you called. Um, And we've got people here, like we've got a wealth of knowledge. One of our owners used to be an installer for us and he's here for 20 years. And, you know, he installed hardwood at uh, Madonna and Guy Ritchie's place in England. Um, He did some work at uh, Buckingham Palace. So some pretty crazy stories. Um, But um, ask the questions because... It's, I've seen so many fails out there that it's, 
it's because someone didn't ask a question or someone decided they knew more. Um, and I, I don't know it all. I used to be in sports retail before this. So I have to learn from the ground up, literally. And there's so much to know in this industry, but ask questions. I do all the time because it, you have nothing to lose. At least it's information. So That actually segues into my last question was if you – can give any homeowner their like three to five main considerations they need to be looking at to decide what type of floor and questions they should then ask and a perfect salesperson, what would they be? Um, I mean, again, find your fit, which isn't really a question, but maybe question yourself of what you feel makes the most sense um, in your home or space. Um, quality is a big one. Understand that, Also, I mean, quality is probably the number one. If you're buying something quality, it is going to last. Mm -hmm. No matter what it is, you may use it a lot more and have to buy a new one, um, but make sure that it's quality. Again, qualify your space. Do you have animals? Do you have kids? You know, what, what's, do you host a lot of parties? Are you on the lake? All these kind of things. Is there a pool next to the room that there's hardwood or vinyl or what have you? Ask all those questions because your product may change. And I think that's uh, that's important because you could put in, you're kind of showing, I think that was walnut that you had, right? Yes. Yeah. Walnut, the walnut, yeah. Walnut's gorgeous. We've got a ton of it in our showroom. It's not the greatest floor if you have animals or a very mm-hmm. lifestyle of children. Um, it is a softer wood and with softer wood, it nicks and dings a little bit easier. You have to know those things because it doesn't, you know, it's not cheap. So if you're going to be putting in something that, I mean, the quality is there, but if it's going to wear a lot quicker than you wanted, you're going to be disappointed because you didn't know those things or that it changes or because it's an exotic wood. Those are questions that you should definitely ask because I will be getting a phone call saying, how come my floor is doing this? Well, we told you all of these things. Or maybe someone else didn't, and now you're a damage control. Again, we're here to help. You're here to help your your customers as well figure out the proper products. You're not just going to throw it all at the wall and see what sticks. Like That's why we have these conversations. Okay. <laughs> and there's actually an excellent question that's come in. It is if... I just, what kind of floor should I have if I want the same through my kitchen and living room that is kids and pets safe? I would say vinyl. But you're the expert. So, I mean, I have hardwood right through my entire house, aside from my mudroom and my my bathrooms. Um, again, everyone's different. So, I mean, the continuousness of having the same floor throughout is great, whether that's tile or vinyl or whoops, um, or laminate or hardwood, whatever that is. I mean no one wants a segmented looking floor and i've seen a bunch of those too um again figure out what makes sense i think having the same floor running right throughout all of these products would be able to handle that i would hope anything that's out there these days um but maybe you bake and maybe you're you know or you cook a lot or you entertain and the kitchen is like high traffic high danger zone you drop bowls a lot there's flour all over the place Maybe tile in that spot is your ultimate mm-hmm. goal because you entertain a lot or you do all these things, and then it makes sense. But make sure there's a good transition there because it can look segmented and it looks disgusting. Um, so figure out, again, find your fit because, you know, there are homes where you've got a galley kitchen or you've got it the older, you know, 90s or late 90s and early 2000s where you kind of have an angled-off kitchen. Sometimes there's great you know, entrances and exits to those rooms where you can have tile in there and it makes total sense. Heck, you can even heat it. Um, yeah, and then sometimes you end up with weird flooring transitions and it just looks off. Yeah, so I mean, they're, they're you, you can use them all. I think, again, find your fit because, I mean, these products do work, but maybe you're not comfortable with that. And that's okay, like, there's no rule. But if you don't feel comfortable, I'm not going to say, well, it's okay, don't worry about it. Like, if you don't feel comfortable, I can't change your mind. So that, that would be up to you to feel comfortable about. And, um, I mean, at the end of the day, that's, that's the big one. So we're, we wouldn't show you something that doesn't make sense. So if we would trust it in there, we'll tell you. But, again, that's up to you to decide that. 
So basically for that question, from a hardwood and an engineered hardwood perspective, it would be in consideration to go from your kitchen to your living room, it would be the type of wood that would be the key one in terms of like you wouldn't go with a walnut because it's a softer wood, but you can go with a hardwood product. If you're looking for something that has a bit more durability to it over wood in general, um, it would be a laminate or a vinyl and all of the options can consecutively go from kitchen to living room. It's really just dependent upon, as Ryan mentioned, which one fits your needs best as well as your budget. I would say overall, I mean, we could probably pick and choose some stuff in there, but I would say as a whole, yeah, it's uh, like I said, a lot of these are qualifying what you need because the, the products will do different things. But overall, don't put in like a, a mosaic of options in your in your floor, because that's the last thing you need is people leaving your house saying, oh, my goodness, what did they do in there? But, you know, if you can go continuous throughout, again, walnut or lamb, whatever, um, yeah, if you can go continuous, yes, these floors should be able to handle what uh, you're throwing at it. But again, figure out what makes the most sense. And, you know, we can go, don't put carpet in there. How about that? Just don't, don't put carpet in the box, okay? I would not put carpet in the kitchen. Yeah, or like, the bathroom. Yeah, it's fan. Although I have seen photos of it, don't do it though. It's gross. I guess. Um, I think we are... We're, we're done. We're good. We, we have covered as much as I think we possibly can without completely brain dumping everyone with far too much information. Key takeaways are ask your questions, really get to know what it is that you're looking for your product to do. And I know that's a cover all statement, but do you have kids? Do you have pets? Do you wear dirty boots and sports shoes consecutively throughout your house? Because those are things that are going to wear on your flooring. Mm -hmm. um, and our factors are going to be in consideration. My husband skis. He doesn't wear his ski boots in his house. But if he did, that would be something that would be a consideration because of the way that a ski boot works. Mm -hmm. So to consider those items. And then really the second tier, once you've laid down those questions, is what is your budget? And then go with that roster to your flooring person, provider, say, this is what we're looking at. This is our budget. And they can guaranteed find you something. doesn't have to be vinyl or laminate. They can work within that budget to figure out what is going to work best for you. Absolutely. And tell them to, because don't expect to get the absolute best product for the lowest possible price, because a lot of times vehicles and everything else, you do get what you pay for. If you're Definitely. with this budget, and it doesn't quite fit in this tier of a product, then let's find you the absolute best product that hits that ceiling or that you're willing to go to. And we're, I mean, most of us, if you're not on commission like we are, we're not on is what I'm trying to say. Um, let's figure out, we don't need to spend every dime you have because we're mm -hmm. it is expensive too. Um, we have families, we have the same bills that you know you and I both have. So. Again, ask the questions because we can help you. We can get what you're looking for, but we need to know what you're looking for. So Definitely. Couldn't have said it better. Mm -hmm. So DM me your takeaways, what it is that you've learned, what your key aha moment is. And if you have any other questions, send me a message and Ryan and I will definitely be there to answer for you. I'll thank you so much for joining. And it was an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me, Gabby. Thank you. Thank you. You found this helpful, be sure to give us a like, hit subscribe to be notified when new videos drop, and be sure to share this with someone who could use a design boost.